Greetings my friends and welcome to Liquid Clay Charms. You know this new uh, liquid clay is super fun for these kind of projects and it's got a lot of advantages over resins. So I've been trying it. I put together a little kit for you based on what I made today so you'll have everything in one place. Or of course you can use things you have at home, which is true of all my videos. You can always find what you need. But um, Christie's and my product links will be below the video. I'm starting with um, my uh, See What You Can See mold, that green one. That's from Christie. I really like the size and shapes of those. The scale is perfect. I've got some jewelry findings, very simple things. Some ice screws, jump rings. And then I also um, brought out some charms. And the charms look really cool when you cast them into the clear liquid clay. That's what I wanted to show you. You can use bezels like that silver one. This is a very important step, is that's to get your oven to 300 degrees. That's a very inexpensive thermometer and I think it's well worth it because 300 degrees is the perfect uh, heat for this kind of a project. Make sure you bring your oven all the way up to 300 before you start and then don't set the timer on it, okay? Just leave it at 300 and use a different timer for uh, your baking. And that way you'll keep a consistent temp. This is Christy Friesen's Surface Effects. Um, her mold and these beautiful micas and glitters are all at her store. There, and there's the link down there below the video. Um, this is some nail uh, glitter that I got, that white is, and I put a little bit extra in there so that I could get kind of a sandy gritty effect on the top of that shell, which I like. Then you can use uh, glitters that you might have. This is Martha Stewart and I like it a lot. It's really pretty. Um, her finest glitters are not quite as fine as Christie's glitters but they turn out really pretty in projects. So I use all kinds of things and just see what kind of effect that I can get. This is the kelp from Christy Friesen and it comes with some of those other ocean colors kind of in a, like a little set. So I'm just going to drop in some to these molds and just kind of stir it around a little bit. You can't really use brushes with the glitter, it falls right off, so I just put it in like this. This is some silver um, liquid Sculpey. It comes in silver, gold, black, white, and clear right now. And the silver, since I'm using silver findings, makes really cool little details. There's dots in the bottom of this mold that really look cute with the silver in them. And that uh, piece of kelp over to the one side that looks really cool with some silver, you know, accents. And you don't have to do it. Uh, you could use white. It might be really pretty. Then you squeeze in your liquid. This looks white here, but that's the way the clear looks when you put it in the mold. And when it bakes, it becomes clear. <coughs> you fill it up just to the top without being, you know, without overflowing it. And you bake it 300, about 45 minutes. I put a foil tent over every single thing I make with clay to keep from um, over browning. Then nip it off with a nail nipper. <coughs> you can't file this stuff. It's too rubbery. It doesn't work. It's really frustrating. So a nail nipper will um, tidy up anything you want. And to make a hole in these, you just heat up a needle tool. That's a butane lighter from the Mini Mart. They've got them in all kinds of sizes and shapes and they're not at all expensive. Uh, my molds have a hole in them already, but not all molds do, so you can make it yourself. Either in the top like this, you know, like the front area, or down in the top like I did with that seahorse, so that you can use your ice screws. So it's pretty easy. And once I have my um, little holders stuck on them, I can use that to, as a handle while I put on some clear coat. But these are my molds. They come in geometric shapes and eclectic shapes, which include like little bottles and keys and Eiffel Towers and stuff. And I'm making a two-layered effect with this. And it's really pretty easy. It's really a lot like using um, resin, UV resin or two-part resin, really. But you do it in two stages so that you can layer what you want in the front. And the front, in this case, is the bottom of these. That's the shiny front side. So when you put things in, you're putting them in upside down. 
then you're putting that second layer of solid color behind it to get that effect. So what I did was choose a few inclusions that I like. That's uh, that silver charm. Note the size of the ring on that. That top ring needs to fit the peg. Uh, if you've got one you really want to use, you can just drill it and make it a little bit bigger. But uh, as you shop for charms, you want to look for charms that have a ring that will fit around the peg. And that way it stays put and doesn't float all over the place. So as you insert these into the um, clay, you're going to want to have about, about a third full of your liquid. You put it in there into each of the molds and drop in your inclusions. So I've got some in there. I'm going to make sure it's enough. Add a little bit if you need to. Make sure it's gone around the back there where the peg is. And make sure that you've got about, um, you know, two-thirds of the clear part and just about one-third of the colored part. And you'll see what I mean as we go. You know, it's not rocket science, but different uh, methods work different ways. And you don't want it so thin on that clear layer that your charm falls through. So there it is about, I don't know, now it's about a little over half full. I'm going to put my charm in and I'm going to dunk it a little bit because that way I'm sure that there's um, clay underneath it and not just a big bubble underneath it. And you can lift them up a little bit if you want to, make sure it's flowing smoothly underneath. You can lift it up and look at it, <laughs> just don't spill it on your face or anything. I've, like, I've done things like that. Okay. So I'm lifting that up and I'm making sure that it's settled where it needs to be. And, uh, you know, the viscosity of the liquid clay kind of holds things pretty well, a little bit better than resin does. Now, if you get it on the dot, the little peg thing, um, you can always poke something through it later, but if you want, you can just tidy it up with a Q-tip. And just settle it right where you want it. And make sure you're satisfied with it. So for the other one, I'm going to put a shell in it. Now when you dunk these shells in, make sure that you fill them up with whatever fluid you're using, whether it's resin or this liquid clay. Because if not, uh, the hollowness inside the shell can uh, create a bubble when you're curing it. It's really disappointing. So I just tip it a little bit and make sure that that cavity has got enough uh, liquid clay in it to prevent bubbling. And you'll have other items from time to time that you'll see or, you know, have a little hole somewhere in them. So just make sure that that doesn't remain a hole when you go to, to bake it. This one's really fun. I'm just going to take my starfish and place it in there. And I'm going to add some shells and some little stones in there. Um, the stones that I used the first couple times I noticed were kind of clear and they didn't show as well through the uh, liquid clay as I would have liked them to. They look kind of invisible. So when you select your shells or your uh, stones, um, make sure that they have, you know, a little bit more color to them and that'll look better. And you can really move it around as much as you want to. The liquid clay doesn't, uh, you know, dry out or harden or anything. So it's really pretty cool. I can fiddle with these till, you know, all the cows come home. But that's kind of um, the relaxation factor of it is the fact that you can make it just the way you want to. You sprinkle in your rocks. And just see how they look. That's a nice color. That one's going to show. The purple ones show well, too. And see what I mean? How the, the clear ones kind of, you know, you kind of have to squint to see them. You're better off with things that are a little bit brighter. So you're popping those in there and uh, just filling the space the way you want to. These clear uh, pendants look good with just one thing in them if you want. Just one charm or one little item. So when these are all ready like this, you're going to pop them in the oven. Use your foil tent and leave them in there for about 45 minutes. 
So now they're cooked and they're looking good, looking pretty clear. I wouldn't take them out if I were you. It's easier to get a good bond without any seepage on the sides if you just leave them in the uh, mold. It's tempting to take them out, but it's better not to. So I'm going to mix up some pretty uh, solid colors to go behind all these. And I'm going to add my inclusions to that teardrop one with the shell in it. The um, first one I'm going to do is the green uh, mica powder. I put uh, just a spoonful into some of this liquid clay, stir it up and pour it in here. And it makes a really, really pretty background. Got a lot of shimmer to it. I spread it and make sure that it's just well covered and goes edge to edge. I've never had trouble getting these out of the molds. I hope I never do. They just pop right out pretty easily. So with my uh, shell one, that's the one where I'm just going to add some clear with some inclusions in it. And I like to kind of arrange them because you can't really see through this uh, clear sculpey when it's in its uh, milky white phase, you know, when it's uncooked. So I just take it and make sure it's in there okay. And then uh, place these, in this case, little half moon sequins in there. And I used to um, put them wherever I want them. You can put them like just in the bottom or just in the top or all over the place. You could kind of just dump them in, but then you can't really see where they've gone. Uh, with resin, you can just dump them in because you can arrange them, you know, because you can see through it. But for these, I go ahead and take the time to kind of place and make sure that there aren't any empty spots. They bake up really pretty. Um, really, anything you put behind the, um, the focal looks really cute. I've done it with uh, little tiny uh, turquoise sequins and I've done it with stars. Um, I just like these little moon shapes for this because the colors, you know, iridescent green goes so nice with all these other colors. So you just do it like that and when it's the way you want it, it's done and set it aside. Now for the one with the shell, I'm going to use this um, gorgeous kelp uh, glitter and I'm going to put a bit in here. Make sure that it's kind of solid. You can stir it up and see if it's solid enough for you and you can always add a little bit. Uh, I've found that the, um, you know, that they cook up similarly you know, no matter what amount that you have in there. So if you want a really light fairy effect, you know, you use less. And if you want a pretty solid sparkle effect, you can use more. It's super flexible because unlike the uh, resin, uh, you don't have to have light go all the way through it. Uh, UV resin's got some properties that you'll see in the next video that I've already started recording. Um, you'll see the difference between what's going on with resin and what's going on with clear uh, liquid clay. And they both have some really great properties, but uh, this, it's a little bit easier to do it this way. So these were all done with liquid clay, and they're just examples of what you can make. So in the end, I made a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, you can just cast a charm in if you want to. Uh, you can use scrapbook paper like I did with this one. And there's all kinds of options that you have. But for this one, I coated them all in clear. And then I hung them all on a chain. It was pretty easy. And I know it's something that you can do. And I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.